You don't know how lucky you are to have me. I hope you die before I do, so you never have to know what it's like to lose a mother. Well, as long as one of us dies, that's good enough for me. Okay, I might get in hot water with this. Hi, I'm Kitty Muck, and I'm here to talk to you about the Owl House. Or more specifically, my favorite character of Season 2A, Gwendolyn Clawthorn. Call me Gwen, dear. Again, sorry ma'am, Gwen. FYI, this video might be a bit controversial, but I'm gonna try my hardest not to give any political opinions. At most, I'll probably make a joke or two, but Gwen's character is evocative of certain people, so I'm gonna have to say certain things. I'll try my hardest not to, but no promises. So let's start from square one. For most of the show, Edith's parents were kept a mystery. Oh, you think that's all the mystery I got? Wait till you hear about my parents. What? You've got parents? I need to know more. In fact, we only really see Gwen in one episode, and a short scene in another. Another. Regardless, she really intrigued me. We first meet her in season two. She's the claw for a matriarch, and she takes after both of her daughters. <laughs> Still got it. On the outside, she seems like one of those cutesy little grandmas that pats you on the head and gives you ginger snaps. Until you mention the slur word around her. Poison like this is made by healers and potion makers who simply want money. I said in a few other videos, but as a teen, Edith got cursed by Lilith. Except this is before Agony Evil Witch, so the Clawthorns just know. Somebody gave it to me. I don't know who, and I don't care because I'm fine, alright? It's portrayed much like a disability, mental disorder, chronic illness, take your pick so long as it can only be managed and not cured. For some reason, I suppose either after the duel or after Edith. <sighs> Gwen called the Healing Coven and learned because of the severity of the curse and the fact it's the first of its kind, the chances of finding a cure were slim to none. This is Clawthorn. We have never seen a curse quite like this. I'm not sure it can be healed. Wait, such a cure has never existed? So if we go by the chronic illness metaphor, why isn't Edith some medical marvel? After hearing her mother tell the healer, My daughter is suffering and I want that thing out! Cut it out if you have to! Although she likely meant in hyperbole, Edith ran away, found the portal, and did stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't get that. Did Ida just run away from home when she found the portal? Her mom knew where she was. How did that happen? She hasn't talked to Lilith in forever, so she obviously didn't ask her. And how did she turn back to normal after the duel? The curse doesn't just wear off. I need answers! Like most jacket characters, it turns out Ida, and by extension Lilith, have mommy issues. Hello, little witchlet. Come here! Gwendolyn. Mm. Mother visits Edelin regularly? Because of the failure of the healing coven, Gwen became a... well... how do I put this delicately? I got my elixir system. I'm good. But, but who knows what they put in those nasty concoctions? Yes, after years of dealing with the healing coven, we start by lowering the beast's defenses with special crystals. Blech. Part of this included joining the Beastkeeping Coven, which I have a lot of questions about. It's law that once you graduate school, you have to join a coven. So what coven was she in before? It clearly wasn't potions or healing. And she was in one before Ida was cursed, considering the fact the family isn't on the run. How did she get permission to join Beastkeeping? Why would the Emperor allow you to switch covens? The whole point of the system is to limit you. Do you need to get special permission? And if so, wouldn't the Beastkeepers tell her before she gets branded, Sorry, we can't do squat. You know, right after Ida was cursed, I joined the Beastkeeper Coven. But the Beastkeepers told me the curse couldn't be tamed. Something I appreciate about her character is, unlike most bonker parents, there's a method to the madness. The whole point of the Beastkeeping Coven is, well, keeping beasts. And the Owl Beast is one. I will find a way to cure you, Edelin, no matter what it takes. For 30 years, she's tried to find a cure for Ida. However, she knows nothing about the curse, she isn't an expert, and she wants a 100% fix. Meaning she always falls for scams that either inconvenience Ida or further harm her. Ah! Oh, no, 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 no. The texts say those feathers mean we're driving the beast out. Because a 40 something, Ida wants little to do with her, usually shooing her away whenever she comes to visit. I got a lot to do today. So sad to see you go. Okay, bye! <laughs> You know what? I give props to the show. This made me sympathize with Gwen. Like the healer said, they'd never seen anything like the Owl Beast before. There's tons of research still to be done with it. Would you really want your daughter to suffer like Ida? Well, I can't let that happen. I'll do something about it. 
I'll find a cure and then- Not to mention they didn't know why Ida was cursed besides somebody gave it to her. So where did it come from or how did they even know Ida was the first to get it? Again, just trying to cover my bases, but potions aren't a 100% fix-all. We've seen this before, multiple times. Not because they're full of mercury, but because like certain medications, tolerance is a thing. By the end of season one, Ida had to take dozens of potions a day just to stay functional. It's taking more elixir to turn me back and more magic to keep the curse from rearing its face. Feathery head. Lilith split the curse with her, but it only bought them time. How long is anybody's guess? Once time runs out, well... It's kinda sorta turn into the owl beast. Forever. Ah, it's a fate much worse than death if you think about it. Uh. It feels weird to say, but it's super amazing the show didn't take the easy route of making Gwen a straw man, like you see on King of the Hill or Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That's something I think Keeping Up Appearances has over the pilot, and a reason I think the former is the latter done right. Warren Raff is over the top, so Luz doesn't seem like a close-minded problem child. Gwen is close-minded, but she loves her daughters, so she seems less like a caricature and more like a global mom. Basically, even if I don't agree with it, I still like it. The tragic thing is, she could have helped Ida in other ways. She could have gotten a better grasp on how the curse functioned, consulted with actual experts, doctors, and pharmacists, I mean. Her other daughter is a coven head. They should have access to amazing health care. Gwen had the right idea to join the Beastkeeping Coven, considering the episode's ending. If Ida acted up, she could have helped to control her, or also to help her husband. <sighs> You might think Gwen is only in the episode to preach about certain parents, or to continue the metaphor, or act as a plot device to get Lilith out of the story. And to that I say, no. Gwen boils Hunter. Hunter's entire request is he wants to help Bellows, thinking the Day of Unity will cure his curse. Gwen has the medical community. Bellows only has himself. Because his curse is so unconventional, looking up obscure methods might be the only way to cure him, without cleaving two realms together. But Bellows is so stubborn and power hungry that it has to be the Day of Unity, and he won't take any substitute. You know what they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Something I like about the curse allegory is how spot on they capture the family dynamic. It's apparently all too common in the real world. Sometimes it doesn't matter how dutiful you are or successful you are. Parents just won't give you the time of day. Because Ida was cursed as a teen, Gwen devoted extra time and attention to her. Because Lily was healthy and mature, she got pushed to the wayside. Heck if I know. Mother wasn't even at my coven initiation. <laughs> Again, Gwen is pretty well written. She didn't do it to be malicious, but because she thought Lilith didn't need her. Lilith, you were always so self-sufficient. <laughs> but I didn't give you the attention you deserved. It's to the point where despite being a coven head, Gwen didn't visit Lilith for 30 years. And when she meets her daughter in present day, she doesn't even question why Lilith and Ida both have gray streaks and different colored eyes. Oh, hello to you too, sweet flea. Ooh, still dyeing your hair, I see. Well, it's very sleek. Now, give me a moment with Edelin, dear. It's important. 30 years pass, and Gwen comes knocking with a new cure, courtesy of Master Warlock, a scam artist, I mean curse expert. For the last year, Gwen has become his pupil and spent it roughing it to find various ingredients for him. In return, he's given her a special tome, but only true believers like her can glance at it. But keep it away from the eyes of non-believers. How many will be blinded by the power it holds? It's sad. You gotta admire the tenacity, though. Dang, girl, your bicep game is ridiculous. Of course, Ida doesn't want it, but Luz feels bad for Gwen and tries to help her however she can. They set up traps to get the beast to come out, but Luz gets suspicious. Then she realizes Gwen is a crazy old hag who's cuckoo banana cream pie. Are bees for existential dread? Aromatherapy for broken legs? Bird songs for sufferers of stuffy noses? She even got her palisman to steal all the elixirs Ida hid. Wait, how did Lilith, Hootie, and King not notice? So, this leads into... Sweet flea? This is where Gwen gets her own reality check. Wardlop is a scam artist, or rather scam artist. Her methods have been ineffective, and for 30 years, all she's been doing is wasting time. Wardlop, he's not fake, is he? After everything I did for him. <gasps> Then her moment comes, and she makes things right. I'm making things right. My beautiful daughters, I failed you. 
Mr. Blake, take notes. This is how you have a proper redemption. In fact, it might only be an episode, but I prefer Gwen's arc over Lilith's. Like I said in her video, she never had the realization the coven system was wrong. Just that the Emperor isn't going to heal an all-powerful anarchist who wants nothing to do with him. And she never challenges him or stands up to him. When she escapes, they downplay her actions and everybody just ignores what she did. I guess you guys are right. Luz and Co are pretty forgiving, but I think it would have been better if we were shown Luz and completely trust Lilith, not her saying it. And once it seems like we'll get more than a subplot with her, she gets thrown into the barn. What works in Gwen's favor is she's probably intended to be a one-off character, who appears one or two times after. Even when we first meet Gwen, she is sweet and sympathetic. She accepts Luce for being human that's more than her daughter did. In fact, she was willing to tell Luce a way she can get home if she helped her. Besides, they make the point Gwen still has much work to do. Lily is still my favorite cloth worn, but I think Glenn's arc was much better handled. This leads into her and Lilith moving in together, her and Eater reconciling, and her telling Luce about Philip. So perfect character, right? Well, you know me, I have a nitpick. A big point about Gwen is she ignored Lilith. And at the end, she tells Eda this. Edelin, Lilith told me how she gave you the curse. I am so, so sorry to you both to have this secret weighing you down. I think it would have been better for both Gwen and her daughter if we saw Lilith confessing to her. That could be another way for mother and daughter to bond. Eh, I guess time constraints were a factor. Anyhow, do you think Gwen is a good character or too ham-fisted? Let me know down below.